Okay, I'm going to try to explain number 21 from the green book. Um, it's a vertical projectile motion question. Um, the velocity time graph below shows the motion of a golf ball of mass 150 grams, which is thrown vertically upwards um, from a platform above the ground. The ball strikes the ground and bounces back up again. The collision of the ball with the ground is elastic. There are two very important things mentioned in that little paragraph. First of all, you have the mass of the ball in grams. Immediately change it to kilograms as you are reading the question. Then the second thing, the last sentence, the collision of the ball with the ground is elastic. That means the kinetic energy is conserved when the ball strikes the ground. The kinetic energy is half mass times velocity squared. The mass of the ball doesn't change, so that means the velocity with which the ball hits the ground will be exactly the same as the velocity with which the ball leaves the ground. So as you look at your graph, you can fill in, um, let's first study the graph, and then we'll fill in the velocity with which the ball leaves the ground, because that was not given on the graph. So if we look at this graph, um, I'm using this example because it involves so much with these types of questions. As you look at your graph, the graph has a negative gradient. I've indicated that here. Okay, The gradient is negative, therefore down is taken as negative because the gradient gives the gravitational acceleration. So down is negative, up must therefore be positive. Negative gradient on a velocity time graph indicates that down has been taken as negative. Down is taken as negative, therefore g will be negative 9,8 if we had to use g values. For the upward and the downward motion, you would take g to be negative 9,8. Okay, so let's study this graph before we even look at the questions. I'm going to use the graph that I drew and not the one from the green book. The, the ball leaves the platform at 12 meters per second. All of these velocity values, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to put v and um, meters per second in this um, axis. So all of these velocity values are either positive or negative. The positive ones are upward motion because down was taken as negative. I have it there. And the negative values are obviously the downward values. So the ball leaves the platform at 12 meters per second. It reaches the highest point where the velocity is zero. That's the highest point. And then it starts to come down, negative velocity values. I'm just going to fill in V meters per second and write in here highest point. I'm just abbreviating. Okay, so this is up, highest point velocity is zero, and this is down. What happens at the third second? The ball bounces. They told us that it bounced. They told us that it was an inelastic collision with the floor. So it hits the ground at 17 meters per second. It's negative because down is negative. Then it bounces up. At the same instant that it hit the floor, it bounces up. So with what velocity does it leave the floor? 17 meters per second. But this is a positive value because it's going up. And then the ball keeps going up. But the graph is coming down because the velocities are decreasing. So this is the highest point after the bounce. Okay, so what I've done here, I always advise you guys to do this. I don't know if you can see the colors. I've taken the first up as red, so it's going up. I've marked it in red. Then it's reached the highest point. It's coming down. I've done that in green. And then the bounce is in purple, and I'll go up in purple. This sketch just makes life much easier when they start asking questions where you need to use the graph. In the first question, 21.1, they're asking you to write down the physical quantity represented by the gradient of this graph. The gradient of a velocity time graph gives you acceleration. So the answer is gravitational acceleration. It has a negative gradient, therefore down is negative. So acceleration is down, it's because the gravitational force is down. Even although the ball is going up, gravitational force is down, therefore acceleration will always be down, whether the ball is going up or down. 21.2, the initial velocity of the ball. Give the initial velocity of the ball. 
There we have it. It's 12 meters per second. It's a positive value. Up was taken as positive. So it's 12 meters per second up. You have to give the direction because they asked for velocity. Once you have given your answer, always check. Have I given everything that they asked for? 21.3. Write down the position of the ball at the following, of, at the following times during its motion. At time 1.24 seconds. Here velocity is zero. So it's the highest point. That's where the ball is there. It's at the highest point. 21.3.2. At three seconds. This is the bounce. It goes up. Highest point comes down and goes up again. So this is definitely a bounce. Sometimes they'll draw this as a skew dotted line. That is when they're indicating that the ball has spent a little bit of time on the, on the ground. But in this case, that time has been made negligible. 21.3.3 at time 4,7 seconds. This is where the ball reaches the highest point again after the bounce. 21.4 I have worked out over here. This one is a little bit tricky and that is where this sketch will help you. They are asking you in 21.4 calculate each of the following without the use of equations of motion. Therefore you must use the graph. If they are wanting height or displacement or position you have to use area under the graph and if they are asking for acceleration you will use the, gra the gradient of the graph. So in 2141, they want you to calculate the height of the ball above the ground as it left the thrower's hand. So this red part is that part. That gives you how high it goes up to the highest point. So it's from that platform to the highest point. Then the green part from the highest point to the ground is going to be this area. So this area is the little flight upwards. And this area will give you from the highest point to the ground. They're not asking either of those two values. They are asking for the height of the ball above the ground as it left the thrower's hand. So they're basically asking you for the height of the platform. The height of the ball as it leaves the thrower's hand will be the height of the platform. So it's going to be the red one minus the green one or the green one minus the red one. But this one's in a positive direction that's in a negative direction. So if we just add them, we're going to get the answer. That's what I've done here. Area under the graph, half base times height for the one triangle and half base times height for the other triangle. So I've done that. Remember for this triangle, the time, your base is 3 minus 1.24. I used the signs. My answer is slightly different to the memo because I used negative 17 instead of putting a negative in my equation. That will give me a negative in the equation. So I ended up with a negative answer, and that is correct, because down is negative. So then in my final answer, I just changed it to positive, because they had just asked for the height. They did not say the displacement. If they had said the actual displacement of the golf ball, displacement is the shortest distance from your start to your end, then you would have to say 7.52 meters downwards, and the negative indicates that it's down. The next question, 2142, without equations of motion, calculate the height at which the ball bounces. So that is this section, the purple one. All right, so it's this triangle. So again, it's half base times height. Now the base is 4,7 seconds minus 3 seconds, which is what I have here. But why is the height 17? Remember, it's an elastic collision. If it hits the ground at 17, it will leave the ground at 17. So that is why I used 17 for the height. And your answer is 14.45 meters. Now remember these values, we're going to be using them for the position time graph. Remember, it goes up um, 7, the, sorry, the height of the platform is 7.52 meters. It comes down 14,96 and then the bounce up is 14.45 meters. 21.5. Calculate the impulse of the ball when it bounces off the ground. The impulse is equal to the change in momentum. And change in momentum is mass times by the change in velocity. So it, get a positive answer. 
5.1 newton seconds upwards they've asked you for impulse impulse and momentum are vectors so you need direction remember the mass must be in kilograms and for your unit you can say kilograms meters per second or newton second not newtons per second now we get to 21.6 the graph draw the corresponding position versus time graph for the entire motion of the ball Take up as positive, which we've been doing all along, and the ground as zero reference. If the ground is zero reference, this graph is not going to go any lower than the ground. So you can take your ground there, and we know that everything will be above it. As I mentioned, we're going to, we need those previous values that we calculated. The ball is going to leave from a height of 7.52. That was the height of the platform. It goes up to 14.96 we actually calculated that in that uh, question in 21.4.1 it comes down after three seconds it bounces and then it goes up to a height of 14.45 which you calculated in 21.4.2 i would just like to look at um, a little summary note for position time graphs with a graph that has acceleration your velocity time graph will be a straight line and the gradient will give you the acceleration. With a position time graph or a displacement time graph, you will always have a curve. Now here are um, four little graphs that will really help you with this. It's all you have to remember. When something is going in a positive direction as we have now, it will have to go upward. So it does that. I'm going to write here. So this is a positive direction. When it's coming down, it's in a negative direction. So upward motions will either be fast, going slower, steep gradient, with the gradient becoming flatter, or slow, going faster, where your gradient increases. In this case, it was going upwards, fast, leaving the thrower's hand fast, and then going slower and slower. But then the ball went into negative direction. Downward was negative, so it will be one of these two. It reached the highest point, zero meters per second, and then went slowly and went faster and faster and faster. So it's that graph. Then your ball bounces, so it's going up in a positive direction again, leaving ground fast at 17 meters per second and going slower and slower. So it's this graph again. So all you need to remember are these four graphs. These two, in this case, are for the positive direction, which is upwards. And these two are for the negative direction, which is downwards. If we take down as positive, then they will swap around. But I will try to do an example for you guys with, an, with taking down as positive and a position time graph. It is much easier to draw a position time graph when you take up as positive and down as negative.